Well, that did not go as expected. Let's see what we can learn. All right. Okay, we have a foot launch aircraft to fly, uh, but we need some places from which to fly them. And the way we'll do that is by creating a custom scenery package. Uh, within your X-Plane folder, you'll find a custom scenery folder. And within that are various scenery packages. Most of these came from X-Plane. A couple of these I installed myself for better resolution in the areas I like to fly. Um, but what we need to do is create one of these that contains our hang glider launch sites. Um, and the way we do that is with a program called World Editor. World Editor is a program that X-Plane provides so that um, users can create and add to the richness of the scenery packages that are available, which I appreciate quite a lot. So if you open a browser and go to developerxplain.com, uh, I'll put the link in the video description, uh, you'll find where you can download your world editors. Uh, pick the whatever the current version is for whatever operating system you like, download it, um, extract it, and I'll get some things out of the way. So here's the folder that we just opened. And uh, within it, there's a program called World Editor. And what we need to do, now you'll notice it has found all the packages that we already have in Custom Scenery. And it's going to give us a chance to edit those if we like. Uh, but I think what we'll do is create a new package. And I'll call it uh, HG Launches since that seems appropriate. And then we will open that. So here's what the World Editor um, program interface looks like. You'll find the world map. Uh, this is going to be something to, you need to know. Uh, in view, you'll want to go to Slippery Map or Slippy Map and select the ESRI imagery. And that'll have the satellite imagery available, which makes it a lot easier to fine tune the placement of your launch sites. The first time you use World Editor, it may not have the imagery, the fine resolution imagery that you're looking for. As it takes a little while for it to download it, and I think it saves it in memory for maybe 30 days or so. So you shouldn't have to wait that long every time. But if you're not getting what you're seeing here, be patient and, and you will. Um, like say, but you do need to make sure you have Slippy Mass, Slippy Map ESRI imagery selected. We're going to set up our first launch site. And in this case, I'm going to set it up at Fort Funston in California, in the San Francisco Bay Area. Uh, Raul Klingberg, who's designing the, the Mark II Klingberg wing, uh, suggested that site. And, and since a model of that wing is the only flying foot launchable glider we have in, in X plane right now, I thought I'll go ahead and, and do that for him. Let's zoom in. California. like the Bay Area right in here, San Francisco Bay Area. Be like a Golden Gate Bridge in San Jose. San Francisco's in this area on the peninsula. Now you'll, you'll notice that's just not good enough resolution to work with. Um, it does, however, uh, get better. If, you might just have to zoom in a little closer before you see what you're looking for. There it is. So, Fort Funston is located in about this area, but let's say you didn't really know it by looking at the imagery. <clears throat> Maybe you've never been to that part of the world before. Then you might want another way to, to locate it. One way to do that is by um, going to hanggliding.org. They have a hang gliding site guide. Um, and uh, within that hang gliding site guide, you can look up what you're interested in doing. And here we have Fort Funston, California. And the reason I've taken us here is this has latitude and longitude information. So if I'm not sure exactly where to place this, I can use the Latin long positions and I'll show you how we do that. I'll move this aside for now. So the very first thing we need to do is create an airport. 
and we're going to create that airport. And over here on the right hand side, uh, we can change the name of that to Port Funston. And we need to give it a field elevation. And if I do a little bit of research, I'll find that it's at about 80 meters. Uh, and then here's an airport ID. You need to fill this filled in. These are standard, and, and there's one of these for every airport in the world, and, and X-Plane uses these uh, IDs in their search engines and, and the like. So you don't want to mess with anything that really exists. And one way you can be sure that, that you don't is to create your own and start out with an X, because there aren't any in the world out there that start with an X. So we'll call this X Fun, because Funston should be fun. All right, so now we've created an airport, but we still don't know where it is, and we don't have any features in that airport. And what we're going to use for putting in a place to launch from is a helipad. So we're gonna come over here to the to where the tools are, and this one here is a helipad. If you hover over long enough, it'll tell you what it is if you can't tell what it is by the little icon. <clears throat> and we're gonna put a helipad, and I'll put it someplace I know it's not supposed to be, like there in the middle of the water. Um, and what that does is, now that it's been created, um, I can put the correct latitude and longitude in these spots. So, so I can take the latitude Longitude. And you can see it moved my helipad to quite a bit closer to where we want it to be. If I zoom in, I can see the parking lot. And this is the actual field from which to take off. And now I've got this 50 meter by 50 meter concrete helipad, which isn't exactly what I'm going for. But I can, uh, I can edit that. Over here, I'm going to make that, say, a 5 meter by 5 meter pad. And I'm going to make it dirt because we don't really have concrete there. Um, no markings, no shoulders. The roughness isn't that important. don't really want to have landing lights or taxi lights around because I'll trip over them and they don't belong there anyway. So we'll click that to none. And now I should have... A little dirt helipad. As you can see by the satellite imagery, the location that the Latin lawn we had is still not exactly right. Um, it doesn't take a lot of imagination to think I should probably be over here in the dirt on the edge near the cliff. So we can take our selection tool, select it, and drag it to where we think it should be. And now we're guessing, but let's call it there for now. So I can select this windsock and put it somewhere, maybe over by the observation area. If I look at the picture, it seems like an appropriate place to put it. All right, so we've taken some guesses about how this is going to work out. And so we may have to go back into X-Plane and, and modify this location uh, of these things if, if we don't like where they are based on the terrain that X-Plane has for that location in space. So let's, for now, let's go try this out and see how it works. We need to save our file. And, and that's not enough. We need to go to File, Export, Scenery Pack. Without this, well, let's just say you need to do this. And what will happen is you'll get some warnings, um, some information about GUI labels, uh, the airport doesn't contain runways. That's not a warning I care about, so we're going to waive warnings and proceed. All right, now if I look in my custom scenery folder from in Explain, I should see what we just created here, this hang glider launches. So now let's go into Explain and see how the positioning of our launch site is. And I'll check back in with you when we get close.
Okay, so new flight, Klingberg Mark II. I have the run version. Notice I also have a wind version. Um, the difference is I tell it in this case that it's a glider, and then it starts me with a tow or winch start option, whereas in this case I don't tell it it's a glider, and you wind up with um, just standing there waiting to run. So that's the one we want today. Um, I'll take that. Let's make sure. Let's take a look at uh, our payload weight. Everything looks good, ready to fly there. Uh, our location. So here's, uh, here's where we want to find our new location. Fort Funston, there we go, I'll highlight it and see XFUN, and there's just a helipad, so this is definitely the place we just created. Let's check our weather. Uh, manually configured, 220 at 15 knots, and yeah, I believe everything else looks pretty good. Let's go start this flight. Well, that did not go as expected. Let's see what we can learn. All right, our windsock is way down there. I'm pointed in the wrong direction, and I'm too far down the slope. So these are all things that might happen to you. That's why I went ahead and showed you uh, if this could happen. And what we need to do is go back into World Editor and move some of these things around a little bit. OK, so. What did we learn? Oops. Control Z is how you undo things. Um, let's go pick our selection tool. And this is too far down the hill. So we're going to move it up to, oh, maybe here. Maybe a little further will be. We can always adjust it again later, but let's this time try and start up on the flat area somewhere. Um, the other thing we can do is change which way it's pointed. Um, I want it to be kind of pointed in this direction, which I'm going to call that around 220, maybe 230. Yeah, that looks good. Um, what else? Might move it this way a little bit more. We needed to move our windsock. So I'll move it. it. In our picture, it looked like it should be here, but that put it halfway down the hill. So the, the terrain in X-Plane isn't lining up with the satellite image in this particular case. Um, so I'm going to just move this up the hill somewhere. We'll see where that comes out, and we can adjust these again later. All right, so I can save. And if I get out now and go back into X-Plane and wait through all the scenery loading and everything, I'll be disappointed and have exactly the same result as before because I did not go export my scenery pack. So let's do that. We have our warnings. Now we should be ready to try again. All right, so let's try this new location. You would think you can do resume last flight, but let's see what happens if I do that. Wait for it. Wait for it. Here we are, Fort Funston. Hmm. Maybe I shouldn't have made that left turn at Albuquerque. All right, so what happens is X-Plane doesn't know about Fort Funston as a flying site, so it put us at the nearest airport, and we're going to have to go back in and change locations. All right, so here we are at Fort Funston. And what do we see? Well, first we have this thing we don't need. I'll get rid of that. Uh, second, we see our windsock, and it's showing the wind direction correctly, although it's not really saying 15 knots to me. I should be standing a little more straight out than that. Uh, the, this wing at 15 knots will be supporting all its own weight, uh, which I suppose I could say that feels about right right now since I'm sitting in a chair. Um, what else? Uh, we've got but one thing I wanted to show you is, see if you can see it, the, the X on my left hand controller, uh, the lower button, will reposition um, you in the cockpit. So let's say I like this as a more comfortable spot. If I press X, it recenters me. If I sit back where I want to be, recenter. Anytime you're not really happy with where you are in the cockpit, you can just move around a little bit and press that X. 
So I am flying the Klingberg Wing Mark II, which is right now the only foot launch glider I think there is for X-Plane. I am working on a version of the Easy Riser just to see what the other end of the performance scale is like. Um, but that's a little ways off. <coughs> so uh, let's go for a flight and uh, take a look at this flying type from the air. Take a few taps and just go for it. That tree is not there in real life. In fact, if somebody's a, a good scenery designer with lots of skills at it, maybe you could let me know how to. Uh, how to remove trees from specific areas. I don't want to take them away from everywhere. I might be able to define an airport boundary and say don't put trees in that boundary. Um, I don't really know for sure. I'm doing the minimum amount just to get flying. I guess what it means is I don't mind ignoring flying through trees once in a while because I know they're probably not really there. All right, so from overhead, we can see the parking lot. We can see our windsock. You can see that little five meter by five meter patch of gravel and amongst the rest of the dirt. Um, and so there you go, that's how you make a launch site. You can put one anywhere in the world. Oh, I know, just, uh, just for fun, let's have a look at energy retention on this wing by doing a, doing a loop. get all my altitude back. Uh, if the real thing flies half this well, it's going to be a winner. So one of the things I like about flying in VR, rather than using a monitor, is let's see how I can see if I can explain this. A lot of your situational awareness when you're flying, you know, where you are in position to everything else around you, comes from how far your neck is turned to see it. If I look back at the flying side right now, my seat's facing the monitor, but my head is really twisted. And that's, that's the feedback that my brain uses to get a sense of when to roll in, when to roll out, how high I am. Uh, and that feedback is a, a valuable part of the input that your brain uses to, to fly well. Uh, and I find that I miss that when I'm just watching the monitor. So it allows me to roll in and roll out on headings much more easily. Um, and maybe more importantly, it, it feels in my neck tendons and uh, body position, it feels like it feels when I'm flying. Um, so for no other reason, the experience is better because I have to turn my head around to see things. All right. My lecture on why VR, despite its poor resolution, feels more like flying to me. It's like the difference between flying in a simulator versus playing a video game. Okay, thanks for watching. Oh, one more thing. You don't need to create new uh, HG launches, sceneries for each location you want to add. Uh, just use the same scenery pack you created and add other airports with other helipads into that scenery package. You can have as many in there as you'd like, I believe. Uh, anyway, th thanks again for watching and I hope to help you uh, be able to create your own launch sites and get more enjoyment out of your foot-launched flying simulators in X-Plane.